Hello, I'm Dr. Seth Sweetser, Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And the article we're going to be discussing today is the evaluation of the patient with diarrhea, a case-based approach. This article will appear in an upcoming edition of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings under the title of A Concise Review for Clinicians. Diarrhea can be a challenging uh, symptom or sign uh, when a, a clinician is evaluating a patient in clinic. And the purpose of this article was to provide a simple five-step approach that can be applied to the evaluation of patient with diarrhea either in the inpatient or outpatient setting. The first step in the evaluation is to define whether the patient truly does have diarrhea and Pause when in. to consider what the patient is defining as diarrhea it's important to exclude fecal incontinence and especially fecal impaction with subsequent overflow symptoms. Once one has firmly established that the patient indeed does have the symptom or sign of diarrhea, the next step is to consider drug-induced etiologies. Almost any medication can have the side effect of diarrhea, so it's important to consider whether there's a temporal association with the initiation or starting of a medication and the onset of diarrhea. The third important step or next step in the evaluation of the patient with diarrhea is to classify the diarrhea as either acute or chronic. This is an important consideration because acute diarrhea defined as diarrhea lasting less than two weeks or going on for less than two weeks is almost always infectious in etiology, has a self-limited course and requires limited evaluation and management. If the patient does have chronic diarrhea, typically longer than four weeks in duration, the next step is to characterize the diarrhea based on stool characteristics as either fatty, watery, or inflammatory. This classification will then determine the next diagnostic uh, algorithm. Finally, if the cause of the diarrhea remains unexplained after going through these four steps. The, final con the, the last consideration is to whether the patient has a factitious etiology. That is, is there some component of secondary gain? And in this uh, instance, uh, ancillary testing to include measuring a stool osmolality to evaluate for uh, the addition of water or dilute urine to the stool to simulate diarrhea uh, can be considered. The last portion of the article uh, goes through three cases of patients with diarrhea applying the five-step, simple five-step approach. I hope clinicians find this a useful and practical way uh, to approach patients with diarrhea in both the inpatient and outpatient setting. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.